Well, hello and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman. I am the pastor of Valley Christian Fellowship in Longview, Washington. And I'm excited to have you join me today as we continue to walk through the New Testament devotionally, looking at a portion of every chapter of the New Testament. And so it's still January. It's early in the year. We're in the book of Matthew. And in today, today, in fact, we are in Matthew chapter 22. Now, there's a, there's a lot in chapter 22. This would be a, a great chapter to look at every single story, every single pericope, every single nuance. Um, But today, here's where we're going to start. We're just going to recognize that there's a lot of tension between Jesus and the religious leaders. Uh, Matthew has been proving that Jesus is the the king of the Jews, and everyone who is anybody, they're pushing against this idea that Jesus is king of the Jews. They don't like Jesus. They don't like that he is... uh, He's got crowds that they are uncertain about him and uh, they don't like that Jesus doesn't kind of bow to them and uh, and tip the hat to them. And so this tension, this conflict, it's, it's increasing, it's culminating. And uh, chapter 22 is just a chapter full of tension between Jesus and the religious leaders. And and I want to look at one of the, the moments of tension, one of the passages that show this um, animosity and really it shows the these um, these people that oppose Jesus their attempts to discredit Jesus really their attempts to trap Jesus and so let's uh let's jump in Matthew chapter 22 I want to look at uh, verses 15 through 22 and so here's what what happens it says then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words they are they're trying to plot against him says, and they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or no? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is on it? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled and left him and went away. Now, again, so much happening here, but but I want us to note from the beginning, they are not coming with pure motives. They are coming to trap him. They're looking for ways to entangle Jesus and to use Jesus's own words against him. And so uh, they, they plot and they send their disciples in the Herodians. And the Herodians, these are Jewish people that they are appeased by uh, Herod, who has Jewish some Jewish ancestry, Herod being the king of the Jews. And so they're appeased by this. And so they are fans of uh, Herod and Herod being the ruler over them, even though he's really a puppet for Rome. And, um, and they sent these people and they, they, first of all, they flatter him. Oh, you're true. And everything you say is truthful. You, oh, Jesus, you're so great. And they flatter him and then they question him. And, uh, they say, so is it lawful or not to, to pay taxes? And this is a trap because if Jesus says it is lawful, then Jesus is going to, he's going to push away the Jewish nationalists that hate the the Roman occupation, that hate the fact that they're subservient, that he's going to push them away. And, but if Jesus says that it is not lawful, well, problem solved. The, The religious leaders just go and they report Jesus for sedition. He is saying that the Jewish people don't have to pay taxes. And that's a quick way to get, to get the Romans to arrest Jesus and to get rid of him. And so this is a, this is a really kind of a brilliant trap. One of those situations where there is no clear-cut answer, they are going to trap Jesus one way or the other. They're either going to discredit Jesus to his Jewish followers, or they're going to incriminate Jesus to the to the Romans. And so Jesus, he, and Jesus, he answers perfectly. He he doesn't get in the trap. First of all, he's aware of their malice. 
They don't have love toward him. They don't have friendship toward him. They're just trying to trap him. And he's aware of this. And he calls them hip- hypocrites. And he says, bring a coin. And the coin has the the, the inscription of, of Caesar on it. And so Jesus, he, he says, you know, whose face is on it? He says, well, it's Caesar's. And so Jesus gives this, this brilliant answer. He says, render to Caesar's the thing, res- render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and render to God the things that are God's. Now, this is great because Jesus answers them and they pose a question that is meant to be an either or question. And Jesus gives an answer that is a both and question. He stumps them when they try to stump him. They, they end up leaving and they are marveling as they leave, kind of like with, as dogs with their tails between their, their legs. And so Jesus' answer, let's, let's, let's just sit on this for a minute. Because in his answer, he he says, for the realm of the government, the realm that the government controls, we are to show honor. So the government controls things like taxes, and so we are to show honor. If it's under their sphere of con- control, if it's it's if it's lawful and legal for what the government to control things like taxes, and yeah, okay, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And then, then he says, for the realm of things that God controls, which is really all things, then we are to show God honor. We are to render to that to God. So key application here is, is, first of all, as believers, Christians, we should honor the government and we should honor government authorities. The, the Bible is clear about this. We, we should honor them. But we also need to understand that the government is not God. The government is not God. Uh, there is a distinction here between Caesar and God. Caesar thought he was God. Caesar made claim to, to being God, and he demanded more than what government should even receive. That aside, we need to remember, we should honor government, and yet remember that government is not God. Government is not the Almighty. That means government is not the Savior. Government does not have the final say. Uh, the big picture here then is, is, yes, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but more importantly, Render to God the things that are God's. Give honor and glory to God that is due him. This reminds us, again, some terms we've used recently, that that God should have our greatest allegiance and our greatest affection. God should have our greatest allegiance and our greatest affection. This means that that we should look to God first and foremost. We We should put our hope in God first and foremost, but really we should honor God because he is God. What is it that we do to honor God? How do we render to God the things that are God? Well, I just want to maybe give a few brief applications here because I think I think it's a tragedy if we listen and read this story and we see that we are to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. We are to honor the government and we are to do taxes. And it's a tragedy if we hear that and obey that and stop there. I think it's easier at times to honor the government rather than honoring God. But big picture here, Jesus wasn't, he he wasn't primarily concerned with the things of Caesar. He was primarily concerned with the things of God. And so what, what does it look like for us to render to God the things that are his? What are, what does it look like for us to honor God? Well, I mean, this is first of all, rooted in the gospel. We actually can't honor God unless we honor God by trusting in his son, Jesus, and his death and resurrection. And so this is in no way a, hey, let's honor God so God will approve of us, so God will accept us, and so we can be saved by our honoring of God. Listen, that, that is not the point here. We, we can't honor God except through a right relationship with God that only comes by trusting in the death and resurrection of Jesus to pay the price for our sin and to give us new life. That, that's where it starts. But but let's let's just kind of get to the, some nitty gritty application here. I would argue that means that that we render to God the things that are God by weekly worshiping. By weekly worshiping. Uh, curious, are you more faithful in paying your taxes than you are in weekly worship attendance? Are you regularly, weekly gathering with the saints, the people of God, with the bride of Christ? Are you weekly gathering for the purposes of rendering worship unto God and then sitting under the word of God to learn and be discipled and to grow? That's 
rendering to God the things that are God. Weekly worship. What about sincere service? What, what about sincere service? Are we, are we looking for what we can get out of this life? Are we looking for how we can, we can receive from those around us? Even when, we, when we're part of a church, are we looking for what the church does for us? Or are we looking to come and, and render to God the things that are God by serving our brothers and sisters in Christ? Are, are we only consumers or are we true worshipers because we are coming and we are laboring along with our brothers and sisters in Christ as we render to God service unto God Really, as we serve others, as we serve others, this chapter includes later a, a, or a, this description of how we are to love the Lord our God and to love our neighbor as ourself. Do, do we have sincere service? And what about what about generous giving? I mean, the, the money's involved here in the Jewish in their religion. They they supported their their uh, their Jewish religion regularly um, but but what about for us are we are we generously giving are we supporting the ministries that that we're part of are we generously supporting the local church that we're part of this is part of how we render under God the things that are God I mean everything we own is God's anyway right and so we should be generously supporting the ministry and the mission of the ministry that we're part of this is this is a passage that, yeah, it reminds us to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. But the bigger picture, the more important instruction here is to render to God the things that are God, that, that, that belong to God. And so just these, these three quick ones, weekly worship, sincere service, and generous giving. This is the ancient way for our modern day. The ancient way for our modern day isn't to be super concerned with our taxes. It's to be super concerned with with the things that are God's. So as we close today, I want you to consider those three areas for your own self, for your own growth. Are you rendering to God in weekly worship? Are you rendering to God in sincere service? And are you rendering to God in generous giving? These are three ways of many others that we can describe, but three ways to start to say, is my life a life that follows the ancient way in our modern day where I render to God, I give to God, I honor God based on the things that are his.